Welcome back to Factory Sealed. It is March 7th, 2013. Ma. Like Pillsbury Doughboy. Woohoo. Woo. Who's poking somebody you just, over there? Somebody's poking. Oh, you want to know, don't you? Oh, oh, oh. I actually, I don't. My name is Eric Peterson. Joining me tonight is Jess Clarkson. Woohoo. Hi, Jess. That's it. What Hello. is with the woohoos? Like, are we on a lackluster roller coaster ride? Like, how how is yep. that? Woohoo! Yay! Aaron Robison managed to peel his wife away from the computer tonight, just long enough to come on. That's right. He was almost. Don't know how long I'll be here, but I, I had to show up. He was almost gonna pull a Ben Schrader, who unfortunately couldn't make it tonight because he is off combing polar bears for lice. It's true. That's the official word, and I'm sticking to it. But he's eating sponsored by Coca Cola. No, his expedition. I don't think we can legally say that. I can say whatever the hell I want. Okay, deal. But filling in for Ben Schrader, we've got a. We'll label him a special guest. Uh, a longtime listener. We decided to invite somebody on to see if we want to have a fourth. We've got Mr. Matt Torchia. Yeah, hello. Uh, it's close. It's Torsha. Okay. So it is It is kind of <laughs> nope. French. You've got one T. It's so actually, it's, it's, it's Italian. Uh, don't, don't explain the one T thing in, in Matt. It makes no sense whatsoever. Well, no, you actually, explained the one T thing to me. My best friend has one T in his name, Matt. That's the way you spell it. You have well, one A in your name. So you're, yeah, you have you no it. grounds to talk. You don't need to put two A's in there. What are you, A A Ron? Well, hey, I, I feel like I feel like I fit right in. I've got the one T, so I'm I'm you know I'm right on par with Aaron, and I uh, and I'm Canadian, so I fit right in with Jess. Uh, yeah, Mr. Oh, Peterson with a D, not the T for a Peter. Hey, that's Norwegian. That's sophisticated. Then, my great grandpa smuggled his way into the country on a pickle boat some hundred years ago. I believe it. I earned that. Of course, that you got D. Jess M Clarkson slash. Whatever no, it's her m- Twitter thing is. It's I, Megan. 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 Sorry. You know, Damn without, straight. We're just yeah. a motley bunch of misspelled names. Right. So well, now my, my mine kinda has a funny story behind it. Um <laughs> my uh and this is the story that, that, that I've been told a couple times is that when uh when I was born my dad was drinking because I mean, come on. Um <laughs> You're and, having a kid, have a drink. Exactly, or or I'm having a kid, have a drink, right? Oh. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he misspelled my name. Uh, I was supposed to be with two T's, but it but it's not. So he he went and signed like the birth certificate and said, "I don't fucking uh, there." Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Are there a lot of scribbles <laughs> on your birth certificate? I don't know. Uh, my my middle name's like Bahana, B- Banana Hammock McGee, so. <laughs> That's pretty that's, cool. Or at least that's what the doctor could make out. I don't know. Look at your birth certificate closely. You've probably got a bunch of different names that were scribbled out. Like, let's let's name him. What's in the room here? Syringe. No, he's a guy. Let's go with something. Else. Check it. I bet you it's there. Yeah, the, uh, that, that's a possibility. Syringe Torsia. Yeah. Yep, there it is. Specula or specu- whatever those things Spe- are called. Speculatum? Is it? Oh, Jess. Uh, would be there. The, the, it's the, definitely not equine. The the metal duck that I'm just I'm gonna Some stop because I'm actually kind of grossing myself out. Well, sorry. I think, I think it would be beautiful to have the middle name equine. It would, especially Very what if majestic. you had. What if we could say that word equine ten times? Ten. You haven't said ten in a while. I, haven't. I know. I missed the tenth episode. You did miss it. Oh, that was God. like an anniversary. I know. I can't believe I missed that one. But you guys did it on like a weird day. The next one that's Even coming like around. Notice. We're going to have to wait for like another, my math is terrible, 90 some odd episodes to get to the 110th. 110th. 
I feel like so no. I don't know if we'll survive. You know, you know this is episode 11, so to get 110, we need uh, Shut 100... up. 99. Shut up. Well, see, now I, I feel privileged because Aaron couldn't make it for the uh, for the fantastic 10th episode, but he's here He's here greeting me. That's right. He's probably got his wife standing next to him just giving him the death glare, like, I gotta refinance this home. I sent her, I sent her on an errand. She's not even in the house right now, so that way. So. Sneaky. I have until she gets back. Where She's did you send her? Toe tap. I sent her to the gym. Oh, so you may have a while yet. I may have a little bit, yeah. What you you know what you should have done is sent her to the gym and then to the nail salon afterwards. Uh, Ew, why would you go to the nail salon if you're all sweaty? They have yeah. showers at gyms in America. I don't know how you do it up in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. I went to CrossFit. They don't have showers. Do you guys there. have deodorant? No. What's, what's deodorant? I've never heard of that. You just they rub. Use, well, I suppose they up use there antiperspirant you... up there, so they don't sweat. Probably just rub moose. Whereas spit Americans, in your they use deodorant. They, so they Do you guys actually sweat. not have antiperspirant? We have everything. Yeah. I was just yeah, confused America, for a second. Jess, we're, Jess we're enormous. We sweat all the time. That's true. You have like that leg chafing stuff, antifungal powder. <laughs> now, all the skin folds. Speculatums. <laughs> and we talk about yeah. some weird stuff on this show. But see, he's got body parts. This is a terrible segue. I don't want to hear where this is going. <laughs> so speaking uh, of body parts, got this rash. Well, it, it goes with our theme that Aaron is always injured somehow. Oh, boy. And again, again this week, I, I somehow messed up my back really bad last week. And on Monday, I couldn't move the left side of my body without being in paralyzing pain. How do you mess your back up working at a video game store? It's probably from all the, you know, wrestling polar bears and alligators I do in my spare time. Oh, Lifting all those copies of SimCity. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't know. I just must have pulled a muscle or pinched a nerve. Anyway, I got to see the chiropractor so I can move now. But I was trying to play some retro games on Monday, and I couldn't hold the controller in my left hand without it uh, freezing my back up in pain. You know what, what you need that would solve all of your back issues is a pair of Skechers Shape-Ups. <laughs> Not only will those so nice. Yeah, not only will those solve your back issues, you will look dead sexy. I hear those things do wonders for your sex appeal. They're actually horrible and don't work at all. (laughs) You want to get the MTDs? Those are the original model. It's MTDs. Those are five hundred dollars a pair. Why don't you just get moon boots? Moon boots. The Nickelodeon moon boots. I wish I could. If I could, I would buy the Back to the Future Nikes that they put out for sale. They made fifteen hundred of them. Wow. I love Aaron, though. Messes up his back, sends his wife to the gym. That's right. Yeah. You, go work out for me. I'm going to fantastic. lay on the couch and eat ice cream. But I'm doing better. I'm seeing that. I've gone to the chiropractor, so I'm, I'm, I am in better shape. So, But uh, anyway, so that's my story and why I... Uh, did you get a handicap parking sticker? I did not. I did not get one of those. you got to learn to capitalize on that. That is a missed opportunity right there. A lot of times they'll give Seriously? you one, and it'll be valid for like three years. Right. Seriously? Well, yeah. I'd have to go to an actual hospital to get one of those. Maraca. I don't think. Maraca. One of my buddies got in a skiing accident and broke his ankle, and he was only on crutches for maybe a month, and they gave him a, a handicap sticker that was, hmm. I don't know if it was a misprint, but it was valid for at least a year. Well, that's pretty good. So he abused the crap out of it. I broke my foot and I didn't get anything. You didn't ask. They're also in Canada. They don't give anything away. Up Down here in Phoenix, they don't care. Everybody parks in the handicap spots. So, so Matt, tell, tell us a little about yourself. You're new to the show. You uh, are threatened Canada us are with... Uh, Most important uh, question. I'm actually from, uh, I'm from Edmonton. Uh, I'm in Edmonton, uh, which is funny because Eric just visited here recently. Yep. And I, uh, I could have introduced myself in person, but I, uh, I just I, I didn't have the chance, I guess. I don't know. We didn't get in contact soon enough. So we should preface this. Um, Matt's on the show because he had the testicular fortitude to send an email. I like that. You like that? I do. It's like intestinal fortitude, but it's with the but balls. With testic- yeah, yeah, more testicles, nice. less intestines. Right. Um, Basically, the email probably in most cases would have just been sloughed off. But I don't know. I don't know what it was that that caught our attention about it. Basically, in a nutshell, you just sent us an email saying, "Hey, I should be on your show." 
because you guys suck. Yeah, <laughs> you are toilet. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa! I, I didn't, I didn't. I think I was more polite than that. I, uh... And then you're like, I'm sorry. Yeah, but you suck. we can read between the lines. <laughs> like, you're like, you know, you guys are always dead silent. School to Google. I can just tell you the answer right off the top. <laughs> Because I'm a smarty pants. When you guys okay. are being when dumb. When I read that, I was like, we need this guy you. on the show. Oh, I just, I, well, no, here's the thing, all right? There, there's been a couple times where, where you've been like, oh, we got to Google this. And then all you hear in the background is your, is your keyboard doing the, right? And then, yeah, and maybe then, someone needs to get better at their editing skills. No, no way. No, it's got nothing to do with the editing. It's just, you know, <laughs> you, I, I just feel like I, I, I've got nothing to say here. <laughs> It was one of I those things where because like, you got answers you want to say, but you you know, yeah. you're waiting for us to find the answers, even though you could be jump in and be like, "This is what it is, guys." Well, I think too, yeah. Well, you I do that all the time when I, when I listen back to the show. I'll listen back sometimes and I'll start answering things like I'm like, "Oh wait, I'm not even recording right now. I'm just an idiot <laughs> talking." <to myself."> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think a lot of people do talk back to the podcast. I know with the the Man and Tank podcast, people do that a lot as well and we get we get quite a quite a bit of feedback on that so we talked about it we convened we had a quorum if you're into Battlestar, um and said you know what let's let's see how it goes and then we got to thinking we did some some polling of the audience and people like yeah it might not hurt so we're gonna give him a give give mott torsia here a a go (laughs) um may turn into a full-time th- full-time deal which would be which would be cool but you know what i, I really appreciate even even just the chance to be on and, and to chat with you guys i think that's fantastic i know that possibly next week we did invite one nick stevens on the show Nick stevens he's been kind of beyond for that that guy is all about he sent in a big long email this week about i, I saw See, that. I, you you wait till you actually got on the show and read the emails and I'm going to the point where I, I read them right away. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed. I went into the email box and everything was read. Except for the one iTunes thing, which was pissing me off. So I read it while well, I just clicked like Marcus read. Clicked it. Right. You the one did. iTunes thing. Yeah, it said something it's, about promotions. It's about iTunes, iTunes subscription probably for being on there. said you guys are the number are one the podcast, podcast on iTunes. Here's a bajillion dollars. I can't wait for that. You know, if I got paid to do this, to I bet you my wife let me do it. All the time, and you wouldn't ever have to get dressed. That's, I would love that, and you could do it from the hospital. <laughs> That's right. You might have to be dressed I like there. The way you're thinking. At least you could have the butt flap open. Oh, that's oh, the yeah. worst. Not, Not enough adult pajamas have butt flaps. I kind of want the old ones that have the buttons, like the trap door. I had a pair of those. Right. I had two pairs of those, and uh, Wait, except I outgrew them. I would want a flap in the back. And a flap in the front, so like you get the full breeze going through and just air everything out. Oh God, that's fantastic. That is <laughs> that is horrible. That is a million dollar idea. Right I have there. never oh. heard that exp- that that response out of Jess. You know what that is? That's that was like night, sheer terror. <laughs> that's so horrible. That would just be the worst picture ever. No way. Could you imagine some like huge, like American? In that, the breeze <laughs> yeah. going through. Oh, oh you got to air that stuff out. Otherwise, you work oh, up a nice... God. Why do you think they invented chaps, Jessica? Yeah. I, okay, do we really want to go there? So, kind of since we're it's on this track... It's not the environment. There is... In my job that I'm doing now, I have to travel around a bunch of different locations. And there is a house on this kind of rural road out in the middle of the desert that there is a elderly gentleman who doesn't necessarily enjoy clothes and the only thing he wears because he legally has to be wearing something outside is a neon yellow speedo and every day we drive by it's just this guy's out there like hanging christmas lights or he's cleaning out his 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 car mowing the grass and he waves at everybody that comes by so like he's drawing attention to himself can you imagine what his tan line must look like oh it's got to be awful I bet it's you it's got to be just a straight bar of from from tan to white. I bet you if he could, he'd be out there in nothing. Well, he's probably I, I in would. his backyard. I used to live on the country, easy. and I used to just run around. Oh my! <laughs> yeah, clothes no on. Way. It's great. You wake up, go outside, stretch. Don't don't get me wrong. It's not that I think that's 
awfully grotesque. It's that I think that that I wish it's I had that grotesque. sense of freedom. Yeah, it was great. And then I and then I moved back down. Or I visited uh, where I used to live at, and apparently they the the farmers must have bankrupt or something because now there's a whole bunch of houses built up around it around that land. And so, now you do that, and you get slapped with a sexual yeah, assault, pretty plot, much, and yeah. you're a sexual predator. Yeah. Not it's like you know I'm on my property. Oh, yeah, because you just wanted to go out and take a leak in the front lawn. That's right. Get on the third floor balcony that. and just let it go. We have derailed very hard. We like, bring a new person onto the show and look at what happened. We've yeah, derailed, gone off the bridge, into the river, exploded, and drowned. What's the show about again? I don't even uh, know. Uh, I think it's about retro video games. Debauchery. Usually it's about Eric Peterson's uh, daily life. <sighs> you don't yeah. want to know about my His daily life. Up. Shut up. His. <laughs> so I debated about posting some of my show choir videos on Facebook, but then I realized, well... Oh, why didn't you? What? Here's why. That would have been a treat. Here's why. I don't. Not everybody has access to my Facebook, but then I, 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 do. I thought about who does. Jess, Aaron... And Matt Eads. And had the third one not been tagged on there, I would have been totally fine with it because I know Matt has both the equipment to record it and the will to recycle it. He would put it up on, on YouTube and share it with everybody. And I'm not sure I'm ready oh, for that. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Sounds like some Eats would do. Oh, totally. So, I don't know. It may happen, but for the the average listener, that probably won't see the light of day. Why so, not? You should be proud. You should be proud of your past achievements. Yeah. I use the term achievements very loosely. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Can I make another quick derailment? Uh, absolutely it is interesting and related to gaming more than all of our other conversations so far all right so we know or you know how we talked about fan expo like last week Mm -hmm. and it's the big like convention in august and it's super fun because they have different genres that are there so there's comic sci-fi um horror anime and gaming Uh but this year they introduced sports what (gasps) Why is yeah. that exciting? Like, it's, I, it's not. Like powder puff football? football? Like golf? No. Cricket? Like Bobby Orr is going to be there. It's Joe Canada. Montana is going to be there. Curling? Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan? Joe I'm Sakic, going. Joe Sakic. I had a lady um, come up to Galifianakis? me. Galifianakis? He's no, a comedian. No, Joe something. He's a hockey player. Joe Rogan? The day we start referring to Hulk Hogan as an athlete <laughs> is yeah. the day that... that that hell freezes over. Gordy Howe? Over few, Who is Gordy Howe and why should I care about him? I think he was on the Canadian. Gordy um, who? Howe. And you say are you're you Canadian. Sure like... You don't even know who your hockey players are. No, I don't watch hockey. <sighs> Unless it's playoffs. Jeez. And then it's fun to I totally watch thought this derailment was going to be worth it. No, I'm saying... This is like that Do you know, I think it's kind of weird <laughs> that they're bringing jocks into a nerd fest well no. now everybody's gonna get beat up it's gonna yeah, be it's like gonna be high terrible. school lunch all over yeah. again just a I'm massacre it's weird nerds that's all it is they're gonna open the door nerds and big muscly dudes just sweating on each other gonna come in i heard a horrible Every... rumor they're gonna remake nerds revenge of the nerds no yeah i'm hoping it's just a horrible rumor that somebody decided to make up sounds like it all right, should we get down to to, to business? Let's get down to business. Nothing at this point, business. at this point, I think I'm gonna, I'm going to bail out. Oh, what the show! Guy. I know. I apologize, but it's nice to meet you, man. I'm sure you have a great show. Is your wife home yet? Uh, she's going to get home pretty soon. Oh. And I don't want to get in the middle of a talking to a show and be like, I gotta go, guys. You know, you, you totally to have to make it look like you weren't on the computer while she was gone. <laughs> I was Maybe. icing my back. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, no, I figured now's a good time to, to bow. As out. classy as it is on. to bail out halfway through a show, 
halfway through. It's like a quarter of the way through. We used to go like two hours now. Uh, I don't know if we'll go that long tonight. We've got right. some real duds. You mean like goof yeah, troop? Yeah. Real <laughs> duds. Fucking goof <laughs> troop. Best game ever. Oh, we we got to get into this goof troop we thing because I troop. I played that. We are gonna get into goof troop, right. Aaron. Well, thank Matt, you for nice to meet you. Joining, and, uh, absolutely. If you have all, here's my wife now coming in the door. Oh, but God, uh, if you need to get a hold of me, run at Quilted Tunic on the uh, tweeter. I, I will do that. You know and, what to uh, do with your audios. I do. Okay. See you in a minute, minute, sir. All right. All right. Bye, I'm not, Evan. I'm not gonna lose you if I close this, am I? Uh, no. let me. No, you should be okay. All right, I'm gonna end the call then, and I'll get it out to you, man. Okay. See you guys. Bye. 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 Let's hope everything doesn't just implode. Boom! It won't implode. There I actually go. hung up on him, so <laughs> I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to leave the fate of the rest of this show in his hands. Right. Because... You just hear him and his wife arguing in the background. <laughs> he didn't really well, he actually turn it on. The it down. One time. Oh yeah. Which is kind of funny. Wait, what? Yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. <laughs> so. Last Crazy. week, I don't think we ever really nailed down a specific list of what we were going to play. I was looking at what I wrote down, and it consisted of, like, nine games. Uh, and just scribbles, and, and the middle Billy scribble bitch. was, like, banana hammock something something. It was, and that's the one that actually took precedence, was Yellow Speedos. Um, <laughs> so I think we wrote down Goof Troop, Golden Sun... Gunstar Heroes, Sunset Riders, Ristar, and am I mi- and is that it? Yeah, that's it. Jess, right? Yeah. yeah. You're like the the minutes keeper. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> <laughs> got to do. Oh, why would you trust? You got to use your Mac for something. Got to keep the minutes. It's about all My it's Mac good is for. Shut your mouth. You saw the picture of my Mac laptop in pieces on the living room floor. Because you're a stupid idiot. No way. That's all it's good for. So let's start with the first game. Do you, I, I, I want to try to remember who recommended this game for us. What was the first game that you mentioned because I stopped paying attention? Goof Troop. Leonid oh, Studio told us fired. we should play Goof Troop because it's fun has amazing co-op, and the puzzles are challenging. Now, he goes on to say the soundtrack is godly, to the point that it makes a monthly appearance in the songs I usually hum. I have great memories of playing this with my cousins. Leonid, I'm going to fly my urine-filled Zeppelin over your (laughs) parade and pop it, because this game is trash. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Sorry, what was the guy's name again? Leonid Astudio. I'm not going to remember that. I'm going to call him Tom. Look, Tom, (laughs) here's the thing. I agree with you. It's a good game. It is. It's a good game. Wait for the butt. (laughs) I'm waiting. But the first first level is excruciating. It's it's so painful. Eric, did you get past the first level? I'm going to be... I'm going to be honest with you. I made it six minutes into this game before I wanted to burn my house down. This game was yeah. beyond terrible. Okay, well, here's here's the thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay, the intro screen was really weird, like when the game first started up. Jess, did you play it? Okay, it was weird for... Yeah, I got to the master key and then got to the, like, boop, 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 the ones that you're supposed to <laughs> throw stuff at. <laughs> You no, know, when the you're at the f- carnival, the yeah. mole, wacky yeah, yeah, mole, yeah, yeah. that thing. That's where I got. Me and too. I was like, no, this is okay, too. I <laughs> so I, I I played right up until the uh, right up until I think the third level, the end of the oh no, the beginning of the fourth, I guess. I don't know. Um, but it was really strange because the first level was painful. Like it was, I was just kind of figuring everything out and and all that. But uh, the the music, oh my god, how does this make it into your playlist? Like the, I can't the, remember the f- if it was that bad. It was awful. Oh, when you're playing it for the hundred millionth time, and and I'm playing it. Yes, I'm playing it on an emulator, but but I was uh, I was playing it legit in the sense where I didn't use any save states or anything like that. 
So I had to restart a couple times while I was figuring everything out, and and the music just wouldn't end. Well, it's typical retro music where you don't ever want to listen to it. Well, you say that, but I could listen to the player select screen music for forever. That is beautiful. Uh, no. But did anyone else's when they like the words at the beginning, the menu or yeah, that opening cutscene made no sense. No, but you know why? It's because if you press a button, it will. Apparently, they were chunked into like three different segments, and the first segment was Goofy and and whoever on the dock doing whatever, and there's like three pictures in that or three scenes in that segment. And then the next one is you see this pirate ship coming towards you, and they've got three pictures in that segment. But if you press a button, it will skip all the rest of the scenes in that segment and kick to the next series. So, oh, see, because I had no problems with it. I must not have pressed a button. Oh, see, me, it's like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, because I can read faster than it's going to appear. So I was pressing it, and the first time I, I popped it in, I'm like, this story makes absolutely no sense. Goofy and his boy yeah. are fishing, and all of a sudden, here comes this this dude on a boat, and then the next thing I know, the boat is washed up ashore on an island. How did this happen? It didn't even make sense either. It went it, from like, so they're doing this, and then all of a sudden, a huge new sentence that made zero sense. Yeah. It's because it's if you press crazy. a button, it will skip into just another random uh, segment. See, for me, it all made sense. Uh, and, and it's Goof Troop. What do you expect? Did you guys watch the Goof Troop TV show? No. You know, like the... I don't know. We're, we're the Goof Troop. We'll always stick together. we got a singer. <laughs> nice. Okay, you go. No, How Goof old Troop? are you? Oh, let's not get into that. 63. You got it. Yeah. On the freaking nose. How did you do that? I can nice. tell. It's, uh, it, it's your tone. It's the way you say your O's that gives it away. You totally really? look so old in your profile picture, too. Like a 63-year-old. <laughs> the, the red I would, lipstick. I would age you at 70, but I don't want to be mean. The red lipstick and the the long blonde hair and flowing the eyelashes. sideways bangs. Yeah, give it to totally. oh, that's That picture was clearly taken on a Thursday night. Oh, yes. <laughs> Typical Thursday at the, at, at the local gentleman's club. Gentleman in quotation I'm totally marks. Totally not. Is that, I don't get that reference. What reference? Am I going to make it awkward? You don't know oh, what a gentleman's know. club is? There... is? No, on is Thursdays... there like a special Thursdays? On, th- <laughs> on Thursdays, I get dressed up as a woman and pretend to be pretty. Okay, anyway. Jokes aren't group. funny no, okay. once you have to explain them. <laughs> Shut your mouth. I thought there was a special at the gentleman's club. In Edmonton, there is. Yeah. Okay. I, we're, Sorry. Where were we? I don't know. Goof Troop. The, the beginning intro. The so the story, the story makes... No sense, but neither did Goof Troop. <laughs> Nothing about the cartoon made any freaking sense. It's goofy. What do you expect? <laughs> but uh, but aside from the really lame story, which which does make sense later on, because after you beat each level, they give you a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and I guess I guess I don't know spoilers to anybody who who doesn't want spoilers on a twenty this. year old game. Yeah, you know. But uh, what happens is I guess they mistake uh, Pete as their pirate captain and so they kidnap him and uh and and think that he's their captain and treat him like royalty Hmm. so so you're on a quest to save pete who doesn't really want to be saved because he's he's being treated like a king is pete your friend i can't remember the show no my god goof pete (laughs) is like is it bluto in popeye right uh goofy and his son max Go to save uh, Pete and his son PJ. Yes. And uh, yeah. Anyway, the first the first level is excruciating. Uh, the puzzles consist uh, of kicking rocks into yeah. locations. I think the most difficult puzzle took me exactly one try to get, and I had to stop for four seconds and look at it. The other I, ones are just like kick it this way, kick it that way. And I disagree. You have your abilities to kill enemies consist of kicking rocks into them. You can pick up what looks like a super soaker pistol that has a, a, a Zelda style chain gun that comes out of oh, it. Oh, I gotta that, get into this Zelda thing. Th- that reaches yeah. exactly yeah. three feet. And then 
your other oh here's the best attack of all <laughs> exactly three feet you, in a video game yes i'm sorry <laughs> you don't no know what feet are let me go with around there let me go with 90 centimeters is that right i, I think it's like 400 know. pixels okay then the best attack of all goofy charges right up to the enemy you press the attack button, and he throws his hands up in the air like, uh-oh, <laughs> and then you get hit and die. Yeah, that's ret- Actually, you know what? I was playing through the first level, and the music that I started getting sick of, the only way to bear through it is when there was no enemies around. I would sit there and raise my hands and lower my hands to the beat of the song. Yeah, what's the point of that move? Does it do Why did anything? Why spend that it, much time? <laughs> it, helps you, it helps you out uh, later on. There are these enemies that throw barrels at you, and if you keep your hands up, when they throw them at you, you just catch them. But the thing uh, is, ha-ha. the key words in that sentence are later in the game. Right. And, and I don't yes, recommend anybody put this game near their system. I disagree. It's... I think it's worth a shot. I think, here's, here's the thing. After that first level, I started playing the second one. And I was like, oh god, I don't know if I can do this. And I paused it for a bit. I went, I took a break, and I came back to it, and I'm like, I'm actually kind of having fun now. I don't know what it is. Partway into the second level, I started enjoying it again. Uh... You're a brave man. The yeah. puzzles get better. and Okay, actually, I, I do have a question. Uh, you know that bell you can pick up? Yo, what the fuck was that? <laughs> what does it do? It does I nothing. It by I made it to the I'm fourth so level. Good. I made it to the fourth level, and I still don't know what that bell did. I think it's supposed to draw enemies closer to you, which comes that in handy. That could have been it. Which comes handy later for, for some of the other puzzles, but but it never worked. Because I rang it once, and then I felt like everyone was coming at me, and I kind of panicked for a second because I didn't mean to do that. But, huh. I feel really bad. I hope Leonid doesn't hate us for... He's cool. The, but but that's Tom one of the does not have a problem. That's one it. of the qualifying things we put into our our recommendations is send us send us your recommendation, but know that we probably won't like it and have every right to tear it apart and tell you that your memories are wrong. I you know did not like this game, like you to the really... point where I actually called my wife and told her <laughs> I hate this game. But I think if you were a kid, it would have been fun. And then he probably still liked nope. it because... Nope, here's the thing. I played this game when I was little on co-op mode with uh, with my brother. And uh, and, and I didn't like it then. <laughs> I, I didn't like it when yeah. I was younger. And now I can kind of respect it a little bit more. I think, I think it's okay. I think this game was one of those that was just trying to capitalize on, oh, video games are new and kids are into it. Let's make a goofy game. It was a TV right. show. They got turned into a game that probably shouldn't have even been a TV show in the first place. Oh, easily. Poor Goofy. I like but, Goofy. He's he's a good guy, but your game sucks. I see. I don't know. I I say give it a shot. I say if you if you if find anything, it, play it to experience how awful it is. No, play it to get to the <laughs> go second into level. it with a piss poor attitude, knowing yes. that you're gonna hate it. This part's true. And then hate it. This part's... No, what? No. <laughs> okay, well, here's here's the thing that kind of annoyed me the most, I think, is that you know how in older video games you'll leave the screen and come back and the enemies will have respawned, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Now, okay, that is the case here, um, and, and the worst part about it is that when they respawn, you have to kill them all again before the door will reopen. Yeah. Yes. And and that's great and everything if that was the limitations of the hardware. But in later levels, they just stop doing that. The enemies, once they're dead, they're dead. You know why? I can tell huh. you exactly why. Because when they started making this game, everyone on the development team was like, yeah, this game's so cool. We're really putting our effort into this. And they got to the later levels. They're like, holy crap, this thing is just a pile of really? junk. But we're too far into it. Let's just cut some corners here and throw this thing on the market and hope it doesn't suck. Okay, well, well, Eric, it, it's clear that you don't like this game. I don't know but, if I could make it any more clear. Did you do, do you like uh, uh, a link to the past? Oh, I love the link to the past. Okay, get to I don't know. Use a code if you have to or whatever. <laughs> Freaking game genie, this crap. But uh, get to the third level. 
it, it, the the level design is exactly the same, and it blew my mind when I was playing this. It is exactly the same as the uh, as the castle in A Link to the Past. So why why would I want to do that instead of just play A Link to the Past? Because it's interesting to see to see the the elements that they borrowed. Or I don't stole want to sully from... the good name of Hyrule's castle with Goofy. It's it's I don't know. I thought it was interesting. I thought you know it was <laughs> neat. Do it. I oh, fine. I don't even. I might have even deleted it. Like just in a pissed off rage. Oh I'll no! If only you. if only there wasn't a, a big vast uh, world. A digital world where you could re-download things. Kind of like the web of a spider. Where right, everything recycling bin. That, that yeah. you can surf on. Oh. I may have to check this thing out. What's it called? It. Uh, I, I don't know. What should we call it? Is it? I think we should call it the... The Eric Jessica Matternet. Okay. But not Aaron, because he bailed early. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'm going to check sure. this... this place out for goof troop dude it's i'm telling you it's so weird it's so bizarre (laughs) like the color the color scheme the uh the the the, everything's just strange i i don't know but i just felt it was weird like Like with the plants and then the pots and then the like grappling hook thing i felt like this game didn't have a direction is is i guess what I'm trying to say, I felt like it was trying to be too many different things. It had no idea what type of game it wanted to be. Yes, it wanted to be some sort of Zelda-esque game, but then it wanted to be this quirky little cartoon game that, that kids could relate to, and it just never really f- fell into its own. And really, I had no idea what was going on. Yeah, absolutely not. Zero. Did you care I though? I don't. Did you care about what uh, was going on? I did a little bit. I was a little, a little upset. I don't believe uh. you. <sighs> har har. So, so I so... just there the there are good things about it, and and I think that's what you need to take from it is is accept the fact that it's an ancient game at this point, and that it's uh you know it's based off of a children's cartoon show. And 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 go into it knowing that, and play it, and just play it for what it's worth, and and I don't know, enjoy it a little bit. I guess I shouldn't be as cynical as I am about it. I just maybe I was in a bad mood the day I played it, but I did not at all enjoy this game. Well, at the very least, you could uh, you should go into the player select screen and just listen to the music. Okay, I'll give you that. Um, who did uh, who did you guys play through as? Goofy or Max? Goofy. Goofy. I play Goofy too. <laughs> Why is that? Because it's called Goof Troop, not Max Troop. Yeah, but their last name yeah. is Goof, apparently. So his name is Goofy, Goofy Goof. Goof. Yep, and Max's name is Maximilian is he Goofy. Goof. <laughs> it's not Goofy Goof. It is, I'm telling you, uh, based off of based off of the uh, the spinoff movie from Goof Troop, uh, a Goofy movie, which I which I hold dear to my heart. That is a great movie. You want me to Google this? It shit? is Goofy Goof. Do it. It is. It's Goofy Goof and Maximilian Goof. What a dumb name. That is stupid. Well, it's like Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. I suppose. Well, or well, I don't know. Goofy, Goofy G. Let's go, with Goofy G. <laughs> he has a bunch of cool nicknames. Yeah, like Dippy Dog, George Jeef, GG Jeef. What? <laughs> I love Goofus D Dog. Yeah, I like that too. That's my favorite. My name is Goofus D Dog because he is a dog, isn't he? Yeah. No, he can't be a dog. He's a dog. He's a dog. He's not a dog. Okay, then what the hell is Pluto? He Goofy is a tall a anthropomorphic kind of dog. dog and typically Wait. wears a turtleneck and vest with pants, shoes, and white gloves. So Pluto's just a slave then. Pluto yeah. He's... Well, because it doesn't make sense. Why is it that Goofy's allowed to get up and drive a car and yet Pluto's confined to a doghouse and being Mickey's paper? On fetcher? Wikipedia it says that Goofy is a dog, while Pluto is a mutt. That is They're being awful. racist. I think Pluto, he... because Pluto is not personified as having 
human characteristics, whereas Goofy is. I like what? Pluto. I like what Pluto the... better than Goofy. What the hell is Pete? 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 Did... Pete he looks like a bulldog. Too. A bulldog? I think so. I think he's a bulldog. Uh... Did did any of you guys watch the Goofy uh, Goofy movie? When I was like eight, you, know. you need to rewatch. It's such a good movie. I can I can so sing probably. You know this stuff then? I Come just on. yeah. What I I don't I'm not into the inner workings of Disney. And if I were, I would have told them not to put that giant wang on top of the tower in uh, <laughs> Little up. Mermaid. That's still the or still a close or to my heart right the now. scantily clad bikini woman on the cover of Lion King in the face of Mufasa, right? Or the yeah. or the sex clouds or the uh, it's everywhere or the or the topless chick in the background of that one movie. What is it? Uh, I can't remember the name of that movie. The one with Jessica Rabbit. No, no. Who framed Roger one, uh, Rabbit? Yeah, that's. I love that's... that one because they picked an awesome name. <laughs> Roger. Shut up. <laughs> Roger is a cool name. I'll give you that. I'm, I'm sure she was talking about Jessica. Oh, never mind. Totally was. Apparently, Pete's a cat. <gasps> Pete's a what? Where are you? Mind is blown. Wikipedia. Wikipedia is, is anybody could go on there and say that Pete is a giant turd, and it would be no, published. it will be taken down within I... a second. I like how one of my uh, one of my things to get on the show was this way. You guys don't have to Google anything. Yeah, and here, here we are. are. I, I posed more questions that none of us know the answers to. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but that makes sense why he's trying to kill Mickey Mouse because he's a cat and Mickey Mouse is a mouse. Right, and Goofy should be eating Pete because he's a dog. Hmm. Too tough for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Final thoughts on Goof Troop. Play it. I give this a terrible out of terrible. I'll give it a well. That would be a perfect uh, score then. Yeah, it's four perfectly and a terrible. <laughs> I'll give it a four and a half out of ten. Mm-mm. Can't use conventional grading systems. This isn't school or the internet. <laughs> Fine, I'll give it uh, four. Yeah, out of oh. ten. Okay. What else did huh. we play? What what else Jess, did you play anything else? Um the cowboy one. Which Yeah, cowboy. Oh, Sunset Riders? Yes. So last week I thought that I thought Gunstar Heroes was a different game. I popped it in. I'm like, "All right, time to get some more western." Nope, not at all. That's so much? I popped in Sunset Riders. Have you had you played it before? No, because I typically don't like those type of games. What'd you think? Um, first, I love the characters. Aren't they, they cool? Were pretty. Yeah. Who did you um, Who did you play through dead. as? First, I played with Billy. Billy is and then the kid. Thank you for that. Um, what color is he? <laughs> blue. Racist. <laughs> we have to. So he, you played through as the blue guy. Okay. And then um, I played I the one on the far left, which I think was yellow. I don't see color. I see people. I see color. Well, do you know what? What He's are blue? Steve. Yellow guy is Steve. Yeah. Okay. And then there's Bob and then the really racist character. Cormano. The one Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> covered horrible. in a poncho with a sombrero and he's got spurs <laughs> so on with guns on his side and his name is Cormano. I could like, play really? this game. Yeah. Um, but hey, this was back in, in the 90s before all of this uh, political correctness came about. But yeah, I really didn't have a lot of time so I didn't play very much of it at all. It's, it's not a long game. Um and I think it's designed that way because it was meant to be like an arcade style game in your in in your home. But uh, this game's fantastic you know single my... player. But if you can get four people playing this, and I remember playing this game as a kid, we had one of the the adapters, the four port adapters, and getting a bunch of friends together and playing Sunset Riders. And 
for as much as I hate the side scrolling beat 'em ups and shoot 'em ups, I like this one. I like this one an awful lot. Did your lot. grandma make everyone's cookie or make everyone cookies so then they'd come and hang out with you? She actually gave me money and I dispersed it to them. Oh, damn. What did I you, totally uh... wish I was your friend when I was little. <laughs> what did you guys play it on? Uh, Super Nintendo. You you have the cartridge, yeah? Uh, this one I did not. Emulator. Yeah. So you guys, did you guys both emulate it? I had to I on did. this one because this was one oh, of the. Oh, stop trying to justify it. Unfortunate um, ones I don't have. Why anymore. didn't you? Why didn't you guys uh, connect and play co-op together if it's so fun? Because we have tried. We don't like each other that much. And the net play for the emulators is not as easy to get set up as one would hope. But we only tried for. We haven't tried Super Nintendo, have we? Yeah, I think we only play tried Nestopia. Oh yeah, I gotta tell you guys, there's there's a game that I'm gonna recommend later um, that I that I really think you should play. Um, based on my nostalgia, I haven't played it in a long, long time, but uh, I I think I think I have to try playing co-op with somebody. Okay, we'll have to see if we can figure it out. Um, see if we can pencil you in. <laughs> Sunset Riders. <laughs> For those of you who haven't played it, is a side-scrolling shooter set in western times and it's it's your typical fare if you've played the simpsons or teenage mutant ninja turtles it's exactly like that um it's kind of cool it's got multi-dimensional levels where you've got different different um heights you can be on it's side-scrolling so you're kind of limited with what you can do but uh each character has guns and you can shoot all different directions around you pick up different power-ups level up your guns stuff like that it's make out with ladies totally yeah you can that's the best part okay now i really gotta play this game i was so excited the first time because you were making out with a girl yeah okay, no, now i really gotta watch <laughs> just play this game <laughs> no because you like run into the room and then i'm like oh this is fun and then i come out i was like yeah i just got lucky Awesome. <laughs> I'm in the middle of the most intense firefight of my life, but I got lucky. Yeah. It's it's good. It's really, really difficult, though, because the the way the levels are set up, you've got guys shooting at you from every direction, and sometimes it's kind of like Contra, where you have to be in a specific spot to dodge all of the bullets on that particular screen. But what's cool is there's the, the ability to, to shoot at angles or down below you, uh, you can shoot yeah. while you're running at an angle, so it y- kind of leaves you open to to get through each level the way that you want. But um, they... you know what? It sounds it sounds more like uh, like Grand Theft Auto. You got people shooting at you. You're sleeping with people, and it's racist. Hey, yeah. What more can you ask for in a Super Nintendo game? Ahead of its um, time. Yeah, I liked it. I think that. How far did you it get? Was... Um, did you at least make it past the the bull scene yeah okay that part's cool uh towards the end of the first level there's this huge stampede of bulls that comes running towards you and you gotta but first there's chickens yeah what the hell's that all about they're warning you you. they're like oh we're running around chickens (laughs) chickens yes that's fantastic (laughs) and then so you got to jump up on top of this stampede of bulls and then to make it all crazy, they put a break in the stampede, and you have to time that jump. And and uh, I don't know. I guess at, in its time, it was cool, but maybe not. And the screen was shaking a little bit. Like we're actually a stampede. Getting into it. Pretty intense. This game. Now that I think about it, there is a iOS and Android game that just came out maybe a year ago called Gunman Clive, and. Uh, I played it. It's it's kind of a cross between Sunset Riders and Mega Man. But if you want a modern version of Sunset Riders and you've or if you want to know what Sunset Riders is like and you've played Gunman Clive, it's almost the exact same thing. Except I don't think you have Cormano to choose from. I'm a little upset about that. Every game needs Cormano. True. His outfit was the best. I love the little accent you put on there. Hey, I live in an area in Phoenix. where people speak Spanish. 
I've picked up a little Spanish. Actually, no, I haven't. Not... Caliente. Uh, I, I, I know how to tell people I have various objects in my pants. And that's about do it. Do you actually? Yeah. No, do you <laughs> actually have something. objects in your pants? No. Like, not oh. what I tell them I have in my pants. Well, that's like, kind of a, a let party. Them. Like, when I, went to, <laughs> when I went to Mexico when I was 17... We just went over the border with my grandparents, and the whole time my sister and I were looking in a Spanish dictionary and just picked up random words. And I, I, I had taken a few years of Spanish, so I knew basic conversational Spanish, but I was just more concerned about telling people that okay. I had a clove of garlic in my pants. So every time somebody came up to talk to me, that's all I responded with was tango, ajo, and mis pantalones. <laughs> and that got you them have an awesome accent the, yeah i totally said it in just a hardcore midwestern <laughs> accent didn't even try to roll the r's i don't know it sounded very authentic to me yeah i i fully thought you were yeah totally mexican just right there from the heart of the yucatan whoa who is that guy where did he come from <laughs> i'm cormano i'm from <laughs> southern mexico born and raised and i have garlic in my pants apparently yes and so from hey that way they knew you weren't a vampire well from there my knowledge i i became interested in other foreign languages so i learned how to tell people in german that i have things in my pants and i'm what about french you know when i actually the pant de la jule ne neuf when i was in edmonton with with uh matt and kevin oliver they filled me in to the point where I could tell people that I forgot what it was because I don't want to know how to speak French. Tabernacle van Tomp. Neither That's do I, word. and I'm from Canada. Stupid. The tabernacle. That's a that's a bad one. Tabernacle. That's, that's like a temple, a Jewish temple. Yeah, I know. Every swear word in French is swearing about the church. Nice. Like one of them, the really bad one is like. I hope your mother never goes to church again or something. Like, it's kind of funny. And fuck means seal. What? So you can say fuck in French class and be saying seal. Weird. Didn't really ever get away with that one, though. <laughs> I took French for several years of school, and, and I don't remember any of it. Hmm. What? What? Uh, uh, what? You have to remember Sava. That was like the first thing ever. How are you? That does... Oh, fine, thanks. But what does Sava mean? <laughs> nice. What mean? Well played. <sighs> you failed. French. Sunset Riders, we can't really... Let's get back to the topic at hand. Sunset Riders, you can't really talk much about it. It's, it's side-scrolling. It gets to some levels where later in the game you get to ride a horse... And you're chasing a wagon train, and the guys in the wagon train are like throwing, throwing logs and dynamite sticks. Some of the cooler levels, you're chasing a train, and there's guys on the train that you got to shoot, and they're throwing shit at you. So it's it's a ton of fun if you're playing it multiplayer. I would say single player, yeah, you're still going to enjoy it, but um, I really like the different gravity settings that they had in the game. Did they? Like you're No, I'm just saying like jumping in that game oh, was just I thought you meant like you could adjust crazy. it. Yeah. And and all bullets went super slow, so guy fires yeah. 16 bullets and you can actually watch all of them travel across the screen. It's I understand That's where the Matrix got the idea. I understand they need to do that. The boss battles, now that I think about it, the boss battles in this game are super difficult. The very first one, did you make it to that you you at least made it that far, right, Jess? No, I stopped after the bulls. Why? Because I didn't have time. I played it today, literally. When you're like, oh, we have 34 minutes left of the show. I was like, yes. Okay. The Most of the boss battles take place on, on one screen, and they've got... The first one takes place in front of a saloon, and you've got a guy in a big fiery red jacket up top with, with uh, dynamite barrels in front of his window for some reason. And there's four doors two on the bottom, two on the top, and a bunch of people pop out, and they're, like, constantly cross-firing over each other. So a lot of it just comes down to luck and timing for beating the boss levels. But um, 
it's really difficult. I enjoy this game a lot. It's one that I always pop back into every once in a while, just for a, a good laugh. I'd play it again. All right, what is next on the list? We're just going to plow through here because we have a ton. Um, somebody recommended that we play Ristar. All you. Christopher Elfo- El- Elford? Yeah, Elford. The guy that said y'all a lot. Y'all. Y'all. He wanted us to play Ristar, and I'm going to just breeze over this, and I played about an hour and a half of it and it plays a lot like a very very slow moving sonic game even the way that they set up the levels and they they introduce it looks exactly like the setup screen for the original sonic games um the graphics are exactly the same as sonic the the backgrounds i wouldn't be surprised if they just pulled some of them out of sonic and put them in here but you're this i don't even want to say that you're a star you're just like this black thing that has a star face and your whole purpose is to use your arms to punch things or reach up and grab things and swing across monkey bars. It's a very, very, very slow moving Sonic game. Huh. Is it, is it fun? If you're into really, I stress really slow paced games. Yes. I actually found myself kind of enjoying it. I I just was playing it over the course of a couple nights and it's mindless. It's it has about as much direction as Sonic does. It's just here's the start of the level, get to the end, and then why? Because here's the beginning, there's the end. That's why. So, I picked up absolutely no point of it. Um that's that's really all the time I want to spend on Ristar. Take it or leave it. Um, I don't remember playing it as a kid, but for some reason it sounded cool. It was on the Sonic Gen or the, I think it was on one of the Sega Genesis collections. But uh, eh, that's my rating. Eh. 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 Jess, what else okay. did you play? Well, I played a tiny bit of Last Corps again. I love that game. I absolutely uh, no. love that game. I uh, was, but, but what? I was just gonna say, like, yeah, I mean, I, this week went by so quick. It's a little bit longer than a week too. Crazy. A little bit. Um, so I was at my local retro store, and I had a little bit of time to kill. So I was digging through the super, the N sixty four collection, which I generally don't ever do because I have most of the N64 games that I want and the other ones that I do want are really hard to find. But um, I found a copy of Blast Core kicking around in there and for some reason I don't have that in my collection but it's one of the more memorable games from my childhood that I don't know why I enjoyed it or I didn't remember why I enjoyed (laughs) it until I bought it and popped it back in and this game the entire point of it is to blow stuff up. That's it. 100%. Yep. Just, here's here's a bulldozer. Destroy. The, the level consists of, there's a red semi-truck that apparently has more nuclear devices on it than any semi should carry. North Korea? Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you bump it, if you breathe on it, if you even look at it, this thing explodes and the, the, the game ends. So what you have to do is clear a path for it. And this thing is only capable of traveling in a perfectly straight line. So you start off really easy with a bulldozer and you have to get these vital buildings out of the way by just driving into That's my them. favorite is the bulldozer. Oh, yeah. All the rest of them are crap compared to the bulldozer. Um, just get the vital buildings out of the way. And then if you get those out of the way, then you can get a better score by knocking down the rest of the buildings. It's a super straightforward game. So so when you saw it in the retro store you picked it up? Oh, absolutely. And and how much did you end up paying for it? 6 bucks. And I was actually contemplating not buying it because Richard decided to engrave his name all over it. Oh, Richard. And there's like Richard. Like, Typical Richard. Boogers. Can you believe Richard? And 
goo and and probably some sort of snot all over it. So I dare you to lick it. I did already. Yeah, you did. I actually and went up to the counter and asked him to take it out of the case so I could lick it. Can I can, nice. can I just lick that? Did that did that bring Let up or, or bring down the price? It actually increased it. My saliva is quite valuable. Huh. It has been known to cure various diseases. Let's inflate that ego even more. <laughs> Not this week. Um, <laughs> how many levels did you play, Jess? Because this game didn't really have much of a direction. It's just like, hey, here you go, blow stuff up. Literally the first one a few times. The bulldozer is my favorite. How long did it take you to figure out what to do? I had played it before, like, I thought I had it, but I can't find it. Um, but not very. Because hmm. I kind of knew what to do before. I can't remember back in the day I don't, how long it took me, I, probably. I, I wish I could remember playing more of this game because I, I bought it and I came home and probably played four or five hours of it. And I played it like I was a kid. I sat on the floor all cross-legged and had the controller in my lap and... And, you uh, club soda or no cream soda? No, I. Cream who soda. drinks cream soda? Everyone. Whoa, come on! Cream soda is delicious. Not children. What? Why That's what it's made cream for. Soda? Cream soda is for old people. Cream soda and pink stuff. It's pink. It's for children. Who drink? We're not talking about the same stuff. Pink cream soda. Mm-hmm. Cream yeah, like soda. Cr- like, like crush. That's not cream yeah. soda. Yes, it is. No, it's yes, not. It you are a crazy person. Cream soda is a style of soda. It doesn't have a flavor. A style? It's not. They don't. They're not all pink or orange. Yes, no. they are. No, they're not all pink. And and I know what you're talking about. But the only the good kinds. <laughs> Here, the 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 crush pink cream soda is is totally for children. This is cream soda right here. I once here. blew it out of my nose because I was laughing so much. That's not cream soda. It says cream soda on the can. It's cream soda. I don't care. Why does it look like it has one of those pit monsters from Star Wars on the can? It's cream soda. It's crushed. No. Do you guys not have crushed? Click. Yeah, we Are have crushed. Crazy? It would come in the party pack. You get cream soda, grita, orange Click. soda. And Click on the else. one I sent you. Is that root the beer. color? That's not root, root beer. beer. That's cream soda. No, you would get root beer with it. Okay. In the party pack. But click on the one right. I sent you. That's cream God, soda. Canadians are so much cooler. No, they're not. You sent you sent me the pink crush can. No, I didn't. You sent the A and W like sent... vanilla sparkle. Oh no, just stuff. sent the the crush Sprite. sparkling vanilla cream soda. That's cream soda. There are many kinds of cream soda. The best kind is what I sent. Anyway, children playing video games don't drink cream soda. Old people eating their fiber drink cream soda. Well, old people have good tastes. I like cream soda, to be honest. But not as a kid. Well, you'd like it if it was pink way better. No, thank you. Snap. Um, How did we get here? Uh Oh. So I'm, you were sitting. You were sitting on the floor like a child. I'm playing. I'm playing Blast Corps, and the game apparently is broken down into three or four different segments. And get this: when I popped the game in, all of the levels were completely unlocked, and there's no menu system to this game. Richard, way to go! Yeah, he had everything unlocked, like top top marks on everything. So kudos to Richard in the Phoenix area. For Big shout out to Richard. Beating the crap out of Blast Corp. So I I couldn't find any way to delete the game. I'm going through all the menus of what there was, and I couldn't find anything, so I'm sitting here. I was actually kind of upset because I didn't know where the beginning of the game was. I'm like, well, if I can find out where the beginning is, I can just kind of progress <coughs> my way through it. And someone had to, to tell me that most... N64 games, when you boot the system on, if you hold the start button, will actually bring up an option to erase all the data on the cartridge. Huh. I didn't... There's, nin- Nintendo does a lot of weird stuff like that. They're like, they do a lot of weird ways to delete your games. Yeah, I had no idea about that. And then apparently, 
too, like something you were just saying with Nintendo doing goofy stuff was the GameCube. If you held down the Z button when it was yeah. loading up, it would make a different noise. It was fantastic. I love that noise. So every time I booted my GameCube, I'm like, I'll hold Z. It just became yep. like crack. But <laughs> anyway, um, they have these main levels where you have to get the the unnecessarily touchy explosive truck from point A to point B. And then they've got these satellite missions where it can be anything like destroy these six buildings in a minute and they will introduce one of the new vehicles for you. And um, probably the worst vehicle is the dump truck. And it's probably because no. for the first four or five hours, I had no idea how to use the damn thing and they even give you a little tutorial, but they're so vague. The dump truck can only knock buildings down by sideswiping them. And in the tutorial, they basically say, accelerate, turn, and let off the gas, and you'll sideswipe them. And it never worked. So but that's ev- stupid, because I feel like a dump truck could do damage by just running into it straight on. You'd think, but not this one. So about four or five hours into the game, I realized that if you hit the R button, it will put it into some sort of uncontrolled skid, and you can slide into the buildings that way. And then I started rocking this game's world. So they have, I'm trying to think of all the, 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 the vehicles. They have the bulldozer, which is easily the best. The dump truck. Then they have some sort of three-wheeled motorcycle that has missiles attached to it. Um, they have a... helicopter thing? Well, the helicopter is what drops you off. But I don't know Long if you point. can... I'm not I'm sure you can use it. Maybe you could use that later. They have some sort of highway pavement grader that when you hit the R button, it like fires these pistons out from the side that can knock down buildings on both sides. Uh, it has some sort of jetpack man where you can launch yourself up into the sky above skyscrapers and then hit the, the, the R button and he'll do like this Mario butt somersault down through all the buildings. And then as far as I got, they introduced like arm cannon man and he's like this big tall transformer guy that only has one arm and he does somersaults into these buildings and blows them up the whole game is just gratuitous destruction sounds fantastic it sounds like that uh sounds like rampage well the reason I, i i picked it up is because somebody last week recommended we play war of the monsters and i actually didn't have that and I couldn't find it at the, the retro store, so um, I saw this. Like, that's a good substitute, and this game's fantastic. It's got tons of replay value, because based on how quickly you finish the level, how many buildings you destroy, and then they've got these these nodes that are on the ground that, for some reason, when you drive over them, light up. So if you light up all of those, destroy all the buildings, and beat it really quick, you'll get a better score, and you'll get a better rating, and unlock more stuff. That sounds pretty cool. I like it. Blast Core has been a great game. One of those that I definitely, definitely recommend. What kind of music goes on in the background while you're doing all this? Is it like some kind of crazy metal while you're destroying everything? Or is it like it's largely classical music? It's largely forgettable. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Which is okay. Mis- you're, you're a bulldozer blowing stuff up. It's every kid's dream. Yeah, but can you imagine how much more memorable it would be if you were a... Uh, if you were blowing stuff up and you had, like, Beethoven going on in the background? Yeah, that would be awesome. I don't know. I like this game. If you if you stumble upon a physical copy of it, pick it up. It's dirt cheap, but for some reason it's really hard to find. Well, I don't know. We are in Canada. Nothing's really dirt cheap here. Yeah, that, nope. uh, that, that retro store I went to in Canada was ridiculous. You were best friends? Where, where did you go to? I don't remember the names of it. Um, no. It was north of one of the colleges, the the okay. radio college that Matt goes to. It was just up by there. It was st- stupidly expensive. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, finding older games here is just so painful. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm not going to talk about Pilot Wings 64 because I, I played a ton of that, but Aaron's not here, so I'll wait for next week. Would, Matt, did you play anything else retro? I, I didn't really, no. I uh, I didn't have a lot of time. I wasn't sure if I was going to be on today or not. I think we may need to hand him the first shit-colored star. Actually, no, Aaron well, gets no. it this week. 
Yeah, yeah he what? He's not even here, man. Throw him but, under but, the damn bus again. The man <laughs> has a back injury. He couldn't <laughs> hold a controller without <laughs> paralyzing himself. Okay, but but here's the thing. I, I didn't even know I was going to be on today until, like, late yesterday. Yeah, I suppose. Neither did we, really. Yeah. We just kind of decided. I should yeah. probably check to see if we have any opinions. Actually, you know what? I lied. I did play a retro game. What? Um, I don't know if you want to consider it. Re- well, you guys went over your definition of retro. Pretty much anything not from the current generation, right? Within reason hey. from previous right. generation. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw. It, I was playing a GameCube game. Okay. I, I I went and I played through uh, Luigi's Mansion. Hmm. I never played that the is... original Luigi's Mansion. Oh, you gotta play it. It's it's really good. I'm kind of looking forward to the one on the 3DS coming up, but. I you've you got to play the original first. Hmm. We'll see. Uh, I feel bad. We forgot to read our opinions for some of these games. If you want to write in your opinions, yeah, factory sealed at manatank dot com. Since Aaron left, this whole this whole show is just discombobulated. We are all out of sorts. He's the he's the glue that holds this group together. Our first our opinion. one show was pretty damn good. Oh yeah, our two on two show went forever. Oh, we yeah. had some Rock philosophical stars. debates. Yeah. Get this opinion coming in from none other than Nick Stevens. Oh boy, he My wants to throw friend. his two cents down on Goof Troop. Oh, good man. I hope he agrees with me. Here is his hey. lengthy, lengthy review. Please do not turn this off. His review is very well written. Very poignant and excellent. I so actually cried a little bit. It just it was bear so with me, please. It is totally worth it. Goof troop equals crap pile. The end. And I'm out. Smiley face. That's the laziness we've come to love from Nick Stevens. Thank you, Nick Stevens. <laughs> Virtual no high five. Respect for Nick Stevens. Tons. None. Me, me, and Tom are over here, and we're just shaking your head at you, shaking our heads at you. He wants to throw his two cents in on Sunset Riders. He played only to the point... I should probably just read it. Nick says, I played Sunset Riders, but only want to point out a few things to limit the size of this email. The selection of characters is quite amusing. You had three blonde white guys, Billy, Bob, and Steve, who all looked alike, and one other guy named Carmano. Really stretching out for diversity. Uh, Just a few thoughts about the game. It's contra hard. I think I made that... uh, that comparison. Contra is also fun. The shotguns feel like permanent spreader gun. Would that be a speculatum gun? Yeah, it would. Okay. Oh, Just God. wanted to make sure I could make that connection. <laughs> oh, oh. We're going to have a lot of people that probably don't know what that is. Equin Search that style. up. Yeah. Oh. Why do I know what that is? I shouldn't know what that is. Because you have a girlfriend. This is true. Uh, he says, I think it was a given to pick one of the shotgun guys. And believe it or not, I think the green guy was the shotgun guy. I could be wrong. Music was good. There was a nice gallop beat and tune to the game, which makes sense because it's a Midwest or a Western style game. You could also tell it's a Konami game from some of the sound effects, almost identical to Turtles in Time. I didn't pick up on that, I guess. Uh, good variety of stages, riding horses, jumping from the ground to the upper levels. Blah, blah, blah. I think that, et cetera. Oh, are you reading along with me? Yeah, I'm making sure you get it right. Are you spot checking? (laughs) Yeah, I am. I don't like you anymore. (laughs) Um, I wish I could be a part of this. Jess, did you play anything else? No, but, well, I tried to. What? What did you try to play? Oh, boy. Carmen San Diego. Oh, no. Oh, that, game. that game is. Hey, I so I have a question about that. Bad. Um. Oh. Where Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? That's for you to figure out. Put the game in and play it. What? My Canadian I've never, friend. I've never actually played it. Did you Do you remember playing Cross Country Canada? Is that like a cheap knockoff of Oregon Trail? I have no idea. Do you even know what Oregon Trail is? No. All right, give me the uh, give me the shit colored star. I have never heard of either of these games. You have breathe. 
Oh boy. Oh, get you? over yourself. I'm about, to, <laughs> I'm about to hear Eric Hulk out over here. The Trail of Tears, Oregon Trail, the Native Americans. We made a game out of it where people get dysentery, shit their pants, and die. What? The whole point of the game is to go from point A to point B with your family oh, in a covered yes. wagon, and you yeah, get to yeah, name yeah, them, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they can die from crapping themselves. That yes, sounds like an now awful, I remember. Awful game. Oh, the game's fantastic. If you had a, if you had any sort of computer back when in in the day, you had Oregon Trail. You could, the dysentery know, reminded me of that. Yeah, but maybe it I just is. don't remember. But cross country Canada is so much cooler. With less death, probably. And no, snowshoes. you're in a freaking transport truck. You're a baller. Okay, so right there, it's instantly not nearly as good because you're in a truck. These people were in a covered wagon fighting off Native Americans like and little pants bitches. crapping death. They really could have used the uh, the 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 butt flaps on their pants. No, because then it would just allow more out. I don't know where I'm going with this. Neither do I, because you're crazy. I don't crazy. want to picture Cross, it. Cross country Canada is amazing. That it sounds a lot Timmins, like Ontario. That sounds a lot like the game that Penn and Teller made called Desert Bus. Timmins. <laughs> I'm sending you all these pictures. That yeah, I'm and I'm looking at every one of them. That's so dumb. Desert Bus is the exact same concept. You go from Tucson to Las Vegas. It's exactly accurate in how long it takes. It takes. I think eight hours to get from Tucson, Arizona to Las Vegas. And Penn and Teller wanted to make a game that was so impossibly stupid that they made, so, so they, they ended up making Desert <coughs> Bus. And the whole point of it is to get your bus from point A to point B. And you get one point when you arrive. And then guess what? You get to turn around and drive home. And when you get home, you get another point. But it's a perfectly straight line, no curves in the road, but your bus ever so slightly veers to the right so you can't just rubber band the a button down and 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 walk away you have to come back and realign your bus and there are charities out there who play desert bus for like 48 hours and then however many points they get people will they'll match that in funds or something i don't haven't really looked into it oh god i've i've heard of the whole uh, desert bus thing i i recall reading i think something about it that is hilarious. What is cross country Canada compared to Desert Bus? Way more awesome. Canadian. You gotta go to Timmins, Ontario. Do you just Calgary just drive? Yeah, there's like math questions or something involved. You have to do really math. Remember. Yeah, it's an educational game. We don't just oh, sit around and play a games blast. up here. Yeah, fantastic. So I'm gonna download this one right now. Drive my oh, semi yeah. and do complex edition. Way to make a Canadian sound awesome. Yeah. You guys make dumb games. Stop making games. Whoa, whoa. Shut your whore mouth. <laughs> oh, my. I'm sure you guys make Goof Troop. Where did Goof Troop come from? No, we, we only made the character Canada. select screen. No. Goof Troop was Canadian there. Uh, You're a liar. You made that up. The last game I played, and I'm probably going to talk <laughs> about this a little bit over the course of the next few shows because it's actually really good. Um, I started playing Golden Sun, and I was wholeheartedly expecting to, to, to pop this in and be like, yeah, I don't have any idea what's going on. Fuck this game and shut it off. But it was that element of having no idea what to do that kept me wanting to play. I always wanted to get into Golden Sun, and I never, I never. There's, did. I, I, I'm gonna try, and forgive me for how terrible it's gonna be. I'm gonna try to give you what I understand to be a synopsis of this game. So, you are this kid of an undefined age named Isaac, and you live in this this village at the base of a volcano. Great place, Vesuvius. Great example. Um. You wake up one day and everybody in town is in a panic because this boulder is about to come loose from this volcano. And 
you have to figure out some way to protect your village from this boulder. And if you go up and look at the boulder, it's not very menacing. And it's got four or five people there using what they call psi energy to hold it back. And it's like, you could just let this thing roll through. It might take out a couple houses and then be on its way. But apparently this thing was a nuclear menace. Um, To make a long story short, this boulder ends up coming through and killing a few people in town. And you are set on this this path of melodrama for a little bit. Uh, The screen fades to black. You come back three years later and shit's getting real again. Um, You need to go up to this place in the mountain called Soul Sanctum because there are these two mysterious figures that showed up that that want to break into this Soul Sanctum that everybody goes and prays in and steal the elemental stones. So you, being this brave kid, take your friend and this old dude into the mountain and discover this whole plot from these two people and huge twist one of the guys who died at the beginning is now a bad guy um to steal the elemental stones and the elemental stones can activate these four lighthouses in four corners of the world and bring the world to an end and that's what i understand to be golden sun and there's a huh. there, there's a gigantic floating rock that has an eyeball who can talk to you telekinetically i d- don't know I don't know, but it's a fascinating game that I can't put down. Huh, I'll have to I'll have to check it out, but now that you've pretty much spelled the entire thing out. That's for me, the first twenty minutes of the game. What? Yeah. That's the that's the, the kicker into once the elemental stones are stolen, you get thrust out into the open world, and then it's like your typical overworld rpg with different towns and and such but what's really cool about this game is the battle system and for a game boy advance game to have graphics that look this good is really quite impressive it almost has this pseudo 3d look to it and it's your typical rpg uh, menu based battle system Um, you got at the beginning you just have your two characters isaac and garrett Um, they each have psi energy uh, where you can cast magic and um, use like earthquake and fire and damage multiple enemies but then once you get out into the world you get these these little creatures called uh, jinn or however you pronounce d-j-i-n-n is that jinn sounds like jinn to me yeah it's like a arabic term like a giant bird or something anyway it's it takes on kind of a pokemon aspect where you can collect these different jinn and they give you different abilities you can summon them and they'll change your character class um but the combat system is really really engaging and it's super fast paced so some of these rpgs get really long and drawn out but this battle system is super fluid really quick really fast paced and it's a ton of fun to actually look at because it's this it's like a drop down over the shoulder perspective in the battle where you can see the backs of your characters from like just behind them and to the left and then you can see the the face of the characters of the enemies and um playing it on the game boy advance itself is actually quite a sight because it's like i said it's it's actually a really good looking game Mm. that's yeah i i really do want to check it out at some point I feel like I'm a little far behind in the series. I did play through all of the first one when it first came out, but I never played number two. And now they're like up to the fourth or fifth game in the series. So I got a little bit of catching up to do. But I, I'm definitely planning on finishing it. So I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit more. Maybe my opinions will change. But you guys want to do some emails? Do we have the email music? Yes, we yeah. do. Email it up. We've got, if you want to write in an email, suggestion, concern, comment, request, factorysealed at manatank.com. We've got a question from Hayden Biddy. From what I believe, this is a dude. Hello once again, FSP peeps. I wanted to suggest another game, Crash Bandicoot Warped, another game my brother and I played as youngins. That's it. Hayden Biddy. I recall playing through that. I never played Warped. Was that still on the PS1 or was that when they shifted over to the PS2? Uh, you know what? I might not have... Maybe Warped isn't the one I played either. Which one did I play? 
Huh. Because, no, You're Crash going Bandicoot. You're to Google now, aren't you? I have to, because I can't think of this game. Yeah, me either. It's, a, it's definitely a PS1 game, yeah. Uh, no, I knew it was PS1. I'm just trying to think of how many games, how many Crash games were there well, they on had, PS1? They had Crash Bandicoot. They had Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. Uh, I remember that one. Then they had, uh, what was the name of Crash Bandicoot 3? What was the name of that? Was that Cortex Strikes Back? Crash Bandicoot The Reckoning. For 3? I don't know. Wait, maybe they didn't have a Crash... I should know this. Maybe it was warped. I think Crash Bandicoot 3 was warped. Yeah. Why does that name sound so familiar? Crash Bandicoot warped. Because that's Crash Bandicoot 3. Yeah. So maybe that was the one I played. I I don't know. Jess, did you ever play the Crash Bandicoot games? The original one. The original one was kind of what sold my uncle on getting a, a PlayStation 1. Um, I thought it was cool. I guess I never really liked it as much as maybe I should have. Well, come on. You you didn't like Spyro the Dragon, so there's already something It's not that I didn't that. like Spyro. I just didn't enjoy it. Uh, you you guys were calling it like some girly game or something. It, I, it that's looks cute. Wrong. Yeah, that's entirely possible. Spyro the Dragon was fantastic. We may have to play that for another show. Um, Okay, Crash Bandicoot Warped. I may have that. I'll have to dig through my cupboard of magic. Let's see. I'm going to write this down on a sticky note this time. Good call. Please do that because there's so many times where I'm like, I have no idea what we're supposed to be playing. I think our list, we need to cull the list a little bit so i can i played like nine retro games this week on top of all the stuff i played for uh mtp um i got like your life is so rough it's well (laughs) got people sending me games and saying hey review this like i don't have time so let's see what were oh emails I can't read this guy's name because it's an entirely different language. So Rum. just call him Tom. That's Rumen. what I've been doing. P- it's I'm going to try to read it in Bulgarian. Ruman Angel of. Don't ruin it. It's Paime Aranob. He says, hello, Eric, Jess, and Aaron. Sorry, Matt. Ouch. Ouch. First, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Ruman Angel of, and I am from Bulgaria. You may never have heard of it. I've, I've heard I of... knew someone from Bulgaria. Where is this Bulgaria place? <laughs> He's Eastern making Europe. it up. I would also like is to... Is that from The Legend of Zelda? Well, True. Maybe. I would also like to tell <laughs> you story. how I started listening to your podcast. I've listened every single episode since the beginning. One night while I was feeling sleepy, I was searching through my phone and found this podcast app. I typed retro games in the search and voila, your podcast was at the top and I decided to give it a shot. It was superb so he wants to throw his two cents in on aladdin i wanted to write you before recording the podcast but it was late i remember playing aladdin for the dos or computer uh which was just a better port of the sega genesis version you say better than genesis huh it was it was it was phenomenal and i was going to mention that to you that uh this guy's right the uh the there was a dos version and that's the one I remember playing, and and it's just like the Sega Genesis one, where uh, where you have the sword and all that. But I remember it being better in some way. Hmm. Huh. Okay. He says, sadly, you can't find the full game for DOS now, but only demos. Another game I remember from my childhood is Disney's Hercules. I believe that's a PS1 game. Which I recently found, but can't play because of my PC. So, I would like to suggest a game. Asterisk and obelix it's out for dos nes and genesis so you could choose a version to play i've played it almost to the end of the game but after a hard drive accident i lost all my game and could not continue another game is the punisher but in my opinion you could try the arcade version thanks for reading my email i look forward to listening to the new episode all the best wishes rumen i'm going to commend this guy for recommending asterisk and obelisk i like this game i've never heard of it really yeah, what what uh explain it. 
it's been years since I've played it. It's one of those games that I'm going to put in that category of I don't remember the game, I remember the name, and I remember gotcha, positive yeah. memories associated with the name. Right. So hopefully this isn't going to be one of those games where I go back to and hate it. Huh. So, Astros and Obelisk. I'm really happy that you read that email because I was dreading trying to pronounce Obelix. 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 Oh, he writes in again. He Obelix. wants to add to his email some more suggestions to retro games. He says, I love Pokemon 2, but played through many of the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance Pokemon. Some time ago, I watched the whole 1, 2, and 3 seasons and can say for sure that I remember all of the series. Anyway, retro games. I would like to see your opinion on Contra, Super Contra, Bart vs. the World, Bart vs. the Space Mutants. This is a big list. This is a huge list. Ninja Gaiden, Ghosts and Goblins. The list can go on and on. Sorry for the double mailing. So I have some things to podcast. Can't wait for episode two. Next episode. Awesome. Um, some of those sound like really, really popular games. Ghosts and Goblins is a very popular game. I feel like we're oh, going to yeah. need one entire show for that game. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to take anything off that list right now. Uh, Nick Stevens. Dear Factory Sealed. It is I, Nick Stevens. We I'm... touched on this before. He's got suggestions at the bottom, Jess. Okay, I'm just saying. Just saying. He Shut your mouth. says, I won't be lazy this week. Thanks for mentioning that, Jess. And I'll recommend <sighs> a game. I think it would be a disservice to play all these Disney games and not play, in my opinion, yes, and many it, others, the best Disney game of all. DuckTales on the NES. Oh. Yeah. Great music. Yeah, Moon Level's the best. Great gameplay. Complete classic. Let's give it a whirl. Whirl? Whirl. Cool whip. As always, it's a pleasure and can't wait to play and mail you my thoughts next week. Fine. Last Disney game, and then... Oh, what? Then but I had an awesome Disney suggestion. Save it for episode 63. Oh, sorry. Oh, man. I'm so disappointed that he chose DuckTales instead of mine. What was yours? Ugh. But <laughs> I'm never going to live this down if I if I tell we you. We played The Little Mermaid. Shut up. That was uh, a great enough. game. Yeah. I, okay, for the, for the Super Nintendo, The Lion King. I get behind that. We'll s- it's a fantastic game. We'll have to save that for another show. Um, yep. For me, next week, I am actually going to continue with Golden Sun. I'm going to like super focus on that. Um, Jess, do you have any suggestions? I don't think we've ever gotten a, like a true original suggestion from you. What do you think? Carmen San Diego. Really? <laughs> no, I'm totally playing it. I'm so excited to play Carmen San Diego again. Okay. Um... Should we play this? This might be good. Should we play Where in the World is Carmen San Diego and then compare that with the Mario Lost in Time? Yeah. Mario's Time Machine, yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Mario's Time Machine. I thought it was Mario Lost in Time. There's a Carmen San Diego Lost in Time. That's what I'm thinking of. Okay. Probably Mario not. Time Machine, Carmen San Diego. Carmen Lost San Diego is for, for which system? Any system you can find it for. I have so a any link. Carmen San Diego game. Um, Jess, what are you playing it on? Um, my awesome Mac. You're playing. Yeah, you're, really. you're playing the for PC version. Uh Nintendo. The regular NES. Well, okay. There's. I'll send you the link that I have. Which because if which... you go to CarmenSanDiego.com and go uh-huh. to play. There's Carmen San Diego. Where in time is Carmen San Diego? Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Okay. And then where in the world is Carmen San Diego let's, for MS DOS? Let's line these up. Since Mario's time machine has to do with time travel, I'm good with where in time. Let's go with where in time is Carmen San Diego. Okay. That's the one that I remember the most, actually. Where in time? What system? Is that it? Is that an NES game? Yeah, there is an NES game, or a Super Nintendo game of it. Yeah. Okay, so Mario Time Machine. And Carmen Sandiego Lost in Time. And I totally did suggest Pokemon Yellow. Just throwing that out. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry you made such a bad suggestion. <laughs> I thought that was fun. I disagree, Jess. I think uh, Pokemon Yellow is a good game. It probably yeah, is. Yeah, that's right. We stick together. I'm actually kind of excited for Carmen San Diego. Yeah, you are. Actually, I actually kind of am. Uh, Matt, you got any suggestions? Uh, I already threw out the Lion King, but we've already got... Uh, We've done a lot of Disney. Um, I think du- we have to put DuckTales on that list. Yeah, yeah, just, I'm going to try out DuckTales again. Just to round this out. Oh, yeah. And then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll call I'm it gonna, quits on the Disney games for a while. All right, I'm going to throw out uh, uh, Uniracers. Uniracers? Uniracers for the Super Nintendo. Oliver loves Uniracers. Uniracers is an amazing game. Hmm. I'm going to question Mark. From from what I remember. Hmm. All right. Well, if you have any suggestions you want to send in to us, factorysealedmanatank.com, send us your game suggestions. We're getting a few more people that are starting to write in with their opinions of it. Hopefully, you guys play along with us and not after. We're going to be super us. stoked about Carmen San Diego. Super stoked. Just throwing it out there. Super stoked. Jess next week has a big announcement for us. Oh boy. Dun, dun, dun. Hopefully it's it's a one hundred percent thing it's happening, but hopefully by next week we'll have the date nailed down for our Solidified. super special guest. And I've already actually had some people that have guessed it, but I have not confirmed their correct answer. You guys are having Gary Coleman on the show? Yeah, we are. Isn't he dead? Sales. No, is he? <laughs> yeah. no. Gary Coleman? Gary Coleman's not Gary dead. Coleman died yeah, falling is. off a ladder. Off a ladder? Yeah, yeah. Off of stilts or something? No, it was off a ladder. That's it was not like a real thing. a while ago, too, wasn't it? It was like right after Billy Mays died on an airplane getting hit in the head of the suitcase. Shut the fuck up. Are you... Wait, hold on. What? You didn't know Billy Shut Mays died? Door. No, I knew Billy Mays died. I... Wait, Gary Coleman's dead? Yeah, we're having a seance. Yes, and so is Andre the Giant. So is Hugo Chavez. <laughs> and so stomping is... Tom Connors. Oh yeah, stomping Tom Connors died. I don't know who that is. So is yeah, Paul. You don't have to. Paul Bearer, the WWE star. Yep. And so I, that's it. I'm done. Michael Jackson. Wait, did, did Billy Mays' death overshadow um, Gary Coleman's? I don't know. I don't think so. Why am I so shocked by this? Gary, <laughs> Gary Coleman died in 2010. What you talking about, Eric? Talking about Gary Coleman's death. Oh my god. I gotta see when Billy Mays died. No, Billy Mays died in 09. So unless his oh. death news lasted nearly a year. And come but on, wait, it did. there's more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not for him. <laughs> That's tasteless. Oh, you're terrible. I think terrible on that people. note, we're going to call this a show. You can follow me on the Twitter at Honest Pizza. Jess, where can we find you? At Jess M. Clarkson. Matt, easy, easy. if anybody wants to follow you, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, MathTor. M A T H T O R. That's kind of hard to remember. What is with you? I just feel like you have the worst memory in the world. I think I do. I'm actually going to schedule a doctor's appointment on the condition of I feel like I'm in a giant fog. Help me. I don't know anything. Did you know that brain fog is a symptom of endometriosis? It's also a symptom of thyroid issues. I don't think I'm capable of having endometriosis. No, not so much. I'm I'm lacking the uterus. Yep, that would do it. So you're doing that stuff do with it. endometriosis. Do you want to plug that quick? Totally would plug it. Do it's it. endometriosis month. And we're raising money. So if you go to endometriosisnetwork.com, and you'll probably have to Google endometriosis to spell it properly. But if you go to endometriosisnetwork.com, you can check out our website and donate money to us because we do awesome things, but we're poor. Isn't there so, a yes. Kickstarter going on? Yeah, for Indiegogo. Indiegogo. But I don't know the URL for that. Okay. So if you go to the donate page, it'll take you to Indiegogo. Sweet. 
give them your money. Do it. Nothing like donating to a good cause. Yeah. And for women, you'll impress them by saying, oh, look, I donate to women's causes. And then you'll get dates all the time. I donated money to your uterus. Yeah. That's fantastic. (laughs) All right. (laughs) On that note, that's going to do it for us. We will be back here next week. Hopefully Aaron in tow. Uh, See you next week. 